Since the start of the electrification age, no product has intrigued me more than electric scooters. After all, they're highly practical, versatile, portable, and somewhat affordable. Which brings us to the Quick 4 by Inokim. This is a fully loaded, tech oriented e scooter, and there is a lot to talk about here. And we're going to go through all its fancy tricks to answer the question of whether or not it's the right e scooter for your needs. So let's get into it. Upon first glance, the Quick 4 definitely gives futuristic and modern vibes. However, it doesn't go too over the top thanks to its simple color palette of silver, red, and black. In fact, it looks kind of minimalist, which I really like. Now, you'll also notice that it's more than just a pretty face because you have a high quality aviation grade aluminum alloy frame here, which makes it very durable and great for general commuting. Granted, you do have a overall weight of 47.4 pounds, which isn't necessarily the lightest e-scooter out there. However, it still has a small form factor that is more than practical for general commuting. The Quick 4 is a fully foldable and adjustable scooter. So not only can you fold it in the L-shaped configuration with the stem downwards, you can also adjust the actual height of the stem for maximum usability, and you can even fold the individual handles, again, for maximum portability. Now, starting with the handles, you do have nice rubber grips. You'll also notice you have a brake lever on either handle because, well, it's a dual braking mechanism. Additionally, you have a lever for the bell chime, and you'll also notice you have four distinct individual buttons which control the various functions for the scooter and all of those can be observed through this nice large LCD screen over here which shows you a number of metrics including speed, cruise control settings, battery levels, power levels, time, and a number of other stuff. And by the way, you can control all these settings for your scooter directly from here rather than having to rely on a third-party mobile app, for example. The lower side of the scooter contains all the mechanical functions. So first and foremost, you have 10-inch wheels on both the back and rear side. Additionally, you'll notice you have a dual suspension system here, meaning the suspension for the front and rear wheels are entirely independent. This makes for a very smooth ride, which I'll talk about a little bit more later on. Now, you also have two brakes. The front brake is a drum brake system. The back one is a disc brake system system. The jury's still out as to which one's better, but I guess the good news is you kind of get the best of both over here. It's also worth noting the deck is a little interesting. So to preserve space and minimize form factor, what Inokim's done with the Quick 4 is that they made a wider deck at the cost of it being not as long as some other e-scooters. To me, there has been virtually no negative effect because of this. In fact, I had more than ample space to stand and keep stability. At the very bottom of the deck, you do have the DC charging port. It takes about seven Seven hours to charge the battery to 100% from zero and you also have a kill switch which is weather sealed in case you need to troubleshoot or completely turn off the scooter for any other reason. In terms of performance you have a fairly powerful 600 watt motor over here which translates to a top speed of 25 miles per hour or approximately 40 kilometers per hour. Additionally the range will vary between 36 to 44 miles depending on whether you get the hero or larger battery super variant. In any case though that's a pretty healthy range and I appreciate Inokim's honesty the number's not bloated if you're using it in medium settings that's how much you can expect naturally though depending on the type of environment you're using the e-scooter on will make a big difference is it on a hilly area is it on a flat surface your own personal weight speaking of weight you have a maximum load capacity of 265 pounds with the scooter in terms of ride quality, after five minutes using the scooter, I was immediately able to appreciate the quality of this scooter versus let's say a much cheaper budget commuter scooter. The difference comes because of just how silky smooth it is. Those advanced suspension systems on both the front and rear wheels means that you get a lot of stability here. And even if you're on uneven surfaces or let's say you hit a small pothole, you hardly feel it, which puts very little strain on your body, which means for longer commutes, it's a more sustainable method of commuting in general. Now, with that said, I also like the low center of gravity here, which means it's great for those sharp turns in case you need to take them. And if you're worried about braking distances, don't be, because from 25 miles to zero, I was able to get there in literally less than 10 meters worth of distance. So in case you have to make that sharp break, you can be confident knowing the braking system has your back. 
There are three integrated LED lights, two at the front at the bottom side of the deck and one tail light at the back. Now, the intention here is to give you a good amount of illumination for the road ahead of you. It's also worth noting that when you press the brake lever, all three LED lights kind of flash to give maximum awareness to everyone around you. Now, another cool feature here is park mode. So when you're not using the scooter, but it's on for a couple of seconds, let's say, it goes in park mode so you don't accidentally press the throttle and just kind of blitz, you know, to keep you safe. You just press the brake lever and you button and you disengage park mode and then you can use the scooter as per normal process. And then the final thing that's really cool over here is that you have three distinct power modes, including eco, sports, and turbo. The real difference is just the artificially induced speed limit, eco being a very slow speed, and turbo giving the full power and sports being in between. The Quick 4 has a IPX4 water resistance rating, which means it's totally okay to use this on those rainy days or run over a puddle or two. Though of course, I would not recommend using electric scooters on a rainy day because you have reduced braking. Speaking of safety, make sure you always keep a helmet on when using the Quick 4 or any other electric scooter for that matter because well, your safety should be your top priority. With a $1,100 price tag, this is not a budget scooter, but you get a lot of value for what you pay for over here. You have an extremely well-built scooter with great materials, but also one that's really well engineered. That advanced dual suspension system combined with the dual brake mechanism make this a very reliable and smooth sailing scooter. Additionally, you have a powerful motor, decent top speed, and reliable mileage, which means it's excellent for daily commuting from point A to point B. Combine that with the fact that you have a list of cool first party accessories you can get like the Inokem helmet or also this nice front scooter bag which can contain small to medium sized items easily. There's just a lot of customization possible here on top of the initial product. Generally speaking, I really do think this is way above their generic you know, commuter scooter. You're getting a lot of comfort quality here in terms of ride and the overall overall aesthetics of the scooter itself as well. Let me know what you think of the Quick 4. If you're interested in getting one, I will leave links below so you can learn more about it. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.